Welcome back to the month of Paradox with Carnades.org. Today we are going to be looking at Diablo's Paradox of Infinite Liars. Note that this is a version of the Liar Paradox. We're going to be looking at it in two different forms, and it's definitely not going to take 90 seconds because this is a bit of a complicated paradox. So, all of the versions of the Liar Paradox so far have involved some kind of self-reference, either directly or indirectly, or some kind of circularity. The simple solution would be just to outlaw all self-reference. Sure, you might cut off some sections of language, but we would solve, in some kind of trivial way, the liar paradox. However, I think there's a way that we might be able to avoid this, and it's called Yablo's paradox. Imagine an infinite list of statements of the same form. What we're going to do here is we are going to create the liar paradox again, but without any amount of circularity or self-reference. So, the first statement goes as follows, S0. All statements of a greater value than this one are not true. For all Sn, if n is greater than 0, Sn is not true. S1 would be the same structure, just replacing 0 with 1. All statements of a greater value than this one are not true. For all Sn, if n is greater than 1, Sn is not true, and so on and so forth. The problem would be, if S0 is true, then all statements following S0 are not true. Therefore, S1 is not true. But if S1 is not true, there exists some other statement, Sm, that in fact is true. This contradicts S0, so S0 must be not true. And yet, if S0 is not true, then there exists some statement Sm, such that Sm is true. If there exists some such statement, Sm, that is true, there exists some statement, Sm plus 1, which must not be true. And therefore, if there exists some statement, Sp, which is greater than Sm plus 1, which is true by the untruth of Sm plus 1, but not true by the truth of Sm. This is pretty confusing as it's stated, so let's see if we can dissect it another way. Imagine our list of statements listed out like this. Now, let's take the case in which S0 is true. Then, S1 is going to be not true, because all S0 says is all statements of a greater value than this one are not true. So, in fact, all of our statements in our list are not true. But, if S1 is not true, and remember, S1 says that all statements that are greater than it are not true, then there has to be some statement out there that is, in fact, true. We could call it SM. Therefore, there is some statement in that list, sm, that is both true and not true. We have a contradiction. But what if we just assume that s0 is not true? I'm using the u for untruth or not true if you hadn't gotten that. If s0 is not true, then in fact we don't know the truth value of s1 all the way up to some statement sm, which has to be true. Because if it's not the case that all statements of a greater value than this one are not true, there has to exist some statement that's greater than S0 that is in fact true. Once we've discovered Sm is true, we can actually go back and say that S1 all the way up through Sm minus 1 are not in fact true. Because if they were true, then Sm couldn't be true. If Sm exists and is true, then Sm plus 1 cannot be true. And in fact, all of the statements following Sm cannot be true. Because all it says is that all statements of a greater value than this one are not true. So for it to be true, that just means that all the following statements are not true. But this would mean that Sm plus 1 being not true says that in fact there exists some statement further along the line, let's call it sp, that must in fact be true. Because if it's not the case that all statements of a greater value than this one are not true, that means there exists some statement sp that is in fact true. Therefore, sp is going to be both true and not true. So, no matter what s0 is, either true or not true, we end up with a contradiction. 
Now, because it's the final day of the month of Paradox, I think we're going to do another Paradox. This Paradox is very similar to Diablo's Paradox, and it's known as Sorensen's Q Paradox of Infinite Liars. It's very similar, but it has an interesting difference. So, in this case, imagine an infinite line of students that have all and only the same thought or the same belief. Student Zero says, some students behind me are thinking something not true. For some SN, n is greater than zero, sn is not true. Student one is thinking the same thought, just replacing zero with one, and so on and so forth. Now, note the important difference here is not changing statements to students or changing a statement to belief, but rather changing all to some. Let's take a look. So, if we Look at this in our kind of graphic format we did before. We have our line of students, S0, S1, and so on and so forth. Let's imagine this time that S0 is not true to start off with. So it's not the case that some students behind S0 are thinking something that is not true. That means that S1 is thinking something that is true, and in fact, all of the students are thinking something that is true. However, this would mean that if S one is thinking something that is true. In other words, that some students behind S1 are thinking something not true. There has to exist some student, SM, that's thinking something that is not true. So, SM is thinking something that is both true and not true. What if S0 were to be thinking something true? Well, then, once again, we can't tell the truth value of S1 all the way up through some SM that is untrue until we know where that SM is, at which point we can say that those people before were thinking something true because they are thinking that someone behind them is thinking something not true, and so long as SM is thinking something not true, it is the case that someone behind them is thinking something not true. However, if SM is thinking something not true, then all of the students behind him have to be thinking something true. Because it's not the case that someone behind him is thinking something not true. And yet, there will be some SM plus 1 such that that student is thinking something true. And so, someone behind him has to be thinking something not true, some SP, which will be thinking something both true and not true. So, no matter the state of S0, be it true or not true, we once again reach a contradiction. The question for you is, is this paradox vertical, falsitical, or antinomious? Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org. Stay tuned for a special Halloween paradox challenge, also coming out today, and stay skeptical, everybody.